So there was a live stream with Christopher Paul Carey and Mike Wolfer from Edgar Rice Burroughs, Inc. this weekend, and they gave me a shout out. It's, it's a really cool figure. There's a there's a really good video out that reviews this by a guy named Todd Luck, if you search for his uh, YouTube channel, where he, he puts this figure with a lot of other figures, with, you know, elephant figures and stuff yeah. like that. It's really super cool. And indeed, I have done a review of both the Tarzan and Jane figure from Boss Fight Studios, and as appreciated as the shout out is, far more important is the confirmations and new news that came out of the live stream, which was done on a YouTube channel called Spinal Ticks. You can check it out. I'll link in the description below. So the first wave of figures from Boss Fight Studios with Tarzan and Jane came out last year after a very long delay from the pandemic and there was supposed to be a second wave but we didn't hear anything about that other than they're working on it when it came to this year and they did their big boss fest which had announcements for a bunch of their different lines we didn't hear anything about tarzan figures now they said that there were going to be uh, more announcements for their hero hacks which is what tarzan falls under later in the year but it's still, you know, it's been a long time and it would have been nice to get some confirmation. And so Christopher Paul Carey does confirm that this is still coming. So Wave 2 has a Tarzan variant that has a different head weapons and he has the jungle briefs instead of the loincloth. And it also includes Lob Opar, which looks like an absolutely phenomenal figure. And I'm going to let Christopher Paul Carey talk about this stuff. Now they're oh, nice. coming. They're going to be coming out with a um, a second wave, and it's going to have. There's going to be a, an alternate Tarzan um, that looks really cool, and then there's going to be Law of Opar, Law and of I'm Opar. really proud of that one because I I helped provide the uh, material for them for that the, the art references and things like that, and we got it looking really really good. And you know I'm the canning geek, right? So like uh, it's a canonical figure. It, it looks just like Law from from the original book so there's she's gonna have two different heads she's gonna have one head that's the traditional egg race burrows one where she's got these gold interlocking uh coins kind of a headdress with interlocking gold coins oh, oh, right. if you've ever seen yeah, thomas yeah. yates the artist thomas yates paint law of opar it looks very much like that um and then you can switch her head out and you can put the joe jusco head because oh, joe nice. jusco has also done law um, and then there's even like the daggers. So the one the one dagger is like the Joe Jusco dagger. And the other one is the J. Allen St. John, you know, the original ERB artist, the one that's ERB's favorite artist. And it's it's her it, her knife that he drew, which is like this kind of zigzagging knife. And I'm just, I can't wait for that figure to come out. And so I definitely appreciate that confirmation that the wave two of those figures is still coming and they made several announcements and one of them was about the victory harbin kickstarter and so this was the first time i've seen interior art from the victory harbin ghost of omos graphic novel this is still scheduled for a kickstarter i believe this summer and the artwork looks gorgeous victory harbin looks fantastic and hucklebuck of course looks cute as all get out Speaking of Hucklebuck, at a recent convention, they had someone cosplaying Victory Harbin, and they had homemade plushies of Hucklebuck. And so they said for the Kickstarter, they're going to offer a limited edition of those stuffed Hucklebucks that are going to be handmade. There's only going to be probably maybe 10 of them or something like that. It's going to be a very high tier, but that's something you can look forward to in that Kickstarter. And so something else they were thinking about for the Kickstarter, and this is not set in stone, but they were thinking about doing a printing of the Victory Harbin novel that would have the same form factor as the old Burroughs paperbacks, those pocket novels that they used to have with the Burroughs novels. And so that's a neat idea. And one thing they announced is the Edgar Rice Burroughs omnibuses. This is going to be available to order in the next few weeks and it's going to come out in August. At least that's what they're aiming for. And so this is going to be two books. They're going to collect three novels a piece. These are going to be novels that will start off each of these series is, and you're going to get the first novel for John Carter of Mars, Moon Maid, and Carson of Venus. And then there's also one with Savage Epics. They'll have Tarzan of the Apes, At the Earth's Core, and The Land at Time Forgot. And so these are going to be great jumping on points or samplers for people not familiar with Burroughs. They won't have the archival material that you see in the 
authorized editions. They're going to be using already existing art on the covers, as you can see, and then they'll be using existing art for frontispieces as well. But other than that, you're just getting the text for the novels, but that's great if you want to read those novels. And so what you're looking at here is an absolutely amazing drawing for Joe Jesco's cover for the authorized edition of Tarzan the Magnificent. And one thing that they announced during the podcast was that they will be going from four authorized editions a year to doing eight. And so that's going to get us through Tarzan much faster and on the John Carter of Mars and the others much faster. And so that is really awesome news. And as far as the new novels go, they did confirm that Korak at the Earth's core is still coming this year and that Deja Thoraz, the Princess of Mars novel, will be coming next year. So those were the major things that I got out of the three-hour live stream, but I think it is certainly worth watching. It started at 11 p.m. on the East Coast. These guys are in California, so at my time it went, went till 2 a.m., so I fell asleep in the first hour. Um, I wish I could have participated in it. would have loved to have left some comments during the stream, but, you know, I probably needed to sleep. So I hope you guys are getting enough sleep, and I hope you guys are excited about the things that are coming up from Edgar Rice Burroughs, Inc. Like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, see ya!